Oh. Five. Hello. Hi. Yay. <laughs> Welcome to our first round of the Young Adult at Heart book discussion name subject to change because we came up with it like three days ago. <laughs> so, uh, welcome. This is our first time doing this and we are discussing the book Ash by Melinda Lowe. That's probably flipped upside or backwards. No, so, it's that's good. Me. Oh, sweet. Cool. Um, so <laughs> that's our first book that we're discussing and I'm Jennifer. Um, Billingsley, I am from the Midwest. I live in Illinois and I work at a, a large library district in Indiana. And next, we're going to go in alphabetical -ish order. Abby, take it away. Hi, I'm Abby Lynch. I live in Connecticut and I work at a small public library in Connecticut. Um, but right now, I'm in East Ham, Massachusetts on vacation. Yay. You are? I didn't yeah. know that. Thank you for coming hey, to yeah. a conversation. <laughs> now, Crystal. Hi, I'm Crystal. Uh, I am an eighth grade social studies teacher in Connecticut, uh, also a small town. Woohoo! <laughs> cool. Now, Kim. Okay, hey, that's me. Talk about this. Okay, I'm yes. You think I know that. I'm Kim. Am I, am I big? I'm not big on mine. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I'm Kim. I'm a children and teen librarian in a small town in Connecticut town. I live in a bigger town. And yay, all the YA books. I think you might be, was, that, was she frozen for anybody else? She was yeah, a little, little bit. Mm -hmm. You're a little frozen, oh, Kim. Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> this. Okay, you're fine now. And now, finally, my lead. Greetings from the West Coast. Um, my name is Mylene, and I'm a youth services librarian, which encompasses all, I guess, from birth to a really long 18-year-old. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Mylene. <laughs> I work in San Monica, and it's the equivalent of San Francisco as far as, like, scrap footage, so that gives you a little range as far as, like, how big the city is. Sweet. Big. I think maybe we will be muting. This is this is totally a test drive for us, for anybody who might be. No one's watching this, but they might later. Um, <laughs> so just in case, we may mute. So if Crystal is attacked by her dog, that yeah, I just... sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. In case anybody brilliant. is curious, that's Valley. She's my dog. <laughs> she did not read the book, though. <laughs> She probably will not have much to say. Oh, hey, guys, someone's watching us. Yay. Hi, Yay. I was like, yes, we're just kind of wondering. He's like, I can. So there's that. Thank Hi, you. Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Our one viewer. <laughs> so famous. Um, it's the beginning, ladies. It's the beginning. <laughs> so um, I want to kind of get everybody's general thoughts on the book. So everybody can talk about whether or not they finished it. Um, they can talk about what they thought about <laughs> um, the book and um, the general theme. So to briefly summarize it, it is a Cinderella retelling um, that received a bunch of honor nominations. Like it's been it's been a pretty well renowned and celebrated little book. So I wanted to definitely check it out. And she's written a couple of others. And it's actually now it's the first. <laughs> In a series, there's a section. The Huntress is actually from is actually set before it, so it's like a prequel. But it is like it's the world is expanding, so it's not a standalone title anymore. But it's a Cinderella retelling. Um, and what made it super remarkable and notable um, in the YA lit community is the fact that Cinderella was queer in it. She was gay and she was interested in a woman's spoilers. I'm spoiling the heck out of this book. I probably should have said that in the beginning. But you're watching a book discussion, so. We're going to assume that you knew that this was coming. So I want general thoughts about um, what you thought about it. So I said everyone before, but this is where I got. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, I, I, was, I felt it was magical being in the forest all the time. <laughs> in the forest all the time. <laughs> and only, only about seven pages ago was it like, oh, hello, Huntress. <laughs> But other than that, I thought it was like well written so far. 
That's all I got. <laughs> uh, ooh, Jennifer Billingsley is adjusting my audio level. Okay. I am laughing really hard. Oh, I, I love that it tells you that. That's cool. <laughs> it does. I see it all. I know all. Okay, well, I'll go next. I made it. Here. I made I'm it to you up this a little part. Bit. Oh, turn me up. <laughs> I am. Large and in charge. Mylene, I made it all the way to the Yay. end. But I liked it. But I love fairy tale retellings. I basically live for fairy tale retellings. And I watch Once Upon a Time all the time. And except for the last couple episodes of the last season, although I know what happened, so it's not that big a deal. But I liked that it was LGBT. And I liked that, I mean, it was quite clearly Cinderella y, which was kind of cool. Sometimes it's a retelling and you're like, where? Where's the fairy tale? Where's the original? I can't find it. Um, but I don't know, the magical forest is really cool, the fae are really cool, they should just come take me now, I should just go wander through the woods and find my lovely fae boy, even though they're all evil, I don't care that much. Um, I don't know, and I, I'm, oh, I like, my favorite thing was, like, the little stories, like, when she would read from, like, her fairy tale book, and then, like, we, I liked that, I thought that was really cool. So, I liked it. I'll read Huntress. Wait, which Huntress is it? Is it, like, the Huntress that she likes or, like, the first Huntress that she no, likes? No, it's, it's set, like, in the distant the distant future or uh. distant past. Like, it's set, like, many generations in oh, the Oh, so, like, past. the first Huntress, maybe. I don't which think so. Which they told the story of, right? That was the story where she goes back for the baby? I only, yeah. got, I only got, like, a couple chapters into it before I got distracted okay. by a lot of anime. But <laughs> I um, had, do. I had a... Uh, it doesn't seem like it's actually one of the myths from the book, or it might be though. It might be just it might be like the real retelling of it, and so you're it, you don't you don't know what it is until the last minute. So, uh, I definitely I'm excited to read that one. I'll read it. I think, we can go on the list. Sweet. I think we are going to try and mute when it, we're not currently talking. So how so, does that work? Um, I can mute you, and you can wiggle or chat me, and I'll mute. I'll unmute you. On the top of your, if you move your mouse to the top, it has a mute microphone, unmute microphone button. I see yep. it. It does. Success. So does somebody okay. else want to talk about their impressions? Abby or Crystal? I'll go. Okay. Um, I really liked it. And like what Kim was saying, I liked that you could clearly tell where the Cinderella story was. But I also liked that it had really its own feel to it too so it wasn't like oh this is just Cinderella okay great um, and I found I was reading other reviews on Goodreads and I wanted to like fiercely defend it because there was one like series of reviews that were all like I can't believe that they made Cinderella gay and I was like oh all right well I think that that was a really cool thing that they did and um it made me like even more passionate about this particular story, so I liked it a lot. You you like Cinderella stories to begin with. You're very attached to that. Like you you enjoy her as a story, as a fairy tale to begin with, though. Because I actually don't like Cinderella stories. Like she is boring to me most of the time. I'm just like, really, lady, like, why are you staying with the stepmother? And I like that the story gave like really concrete reasons for why she's like trapped in this abusive relationship in this household. Why she's like she, that she doesn't have agency because of her age and because of the trauma of her parents dying. Like it's really it gives really good reasons for why she like stays. And I think in a lot of the books, I'm just like, leave, girl, just leave, just go, and I, I will help. Like, I'm just, just go, please get out. Um, I tend to be unsympathetic in that way, though. But you like the Cinderella story, or do you not? Do Crystal, in particular, was that just like forced upon you as something that you had to like? Um, I mean, my name was Crystal Shoe, so I wasn't really given much of an option. <laughs> In terms of liking it, it's it kind of was thrust upon me in that way. I did not know that. My lean space right now is kind of the best ever. <laughs> that was in fact my name. So, uh, but yeah, so I think it was more so something that's just been associated because of my name. She's not a char. I mean, she's a character that I then came to identify with because it was cute and fun. But I would agree with you. I also like that it gave her parental story a little bit more depth, like learning more about her mother and father in this particular story. I thought it was cool. What about you, Abby? 
Um, I finished it a while ago, so I'm going to be very hazy on the details because I also don't have my copy with me. So when we get into it, just forgive me when I'm like, and that character whose name was something. Um, I thought it was fine. <laughs> it's not really my genre at all. Um, I don't really like Cinderella stories. I was like, oh no, Crystal got really mad because people gave bad reviews. But if they were giving bad reviews because of the whole gay thing, then they should, you should be mad about it. But I, I, I didn't like it. And I was like, oh no, don't be mad at me because I didn't love it. I thought the atmosphere of the story was really nice, but I remember next to nothing about it. So, but that could just be because it's not for me. What about you, Bailene? The, if, if you end up finishing it, I think that it would be a good, it, I'm trying to think of a way to talk about it without, does anybody else have any, I, I like how they resolved that, um, we're just going to talk about it like you've, you're, you've accepted the fact that we are spoiling this for you. It is. It's a very like familial. It's a very like familial, like toxic kind of. He's like a toxic fairy godmother, um, and I, I. That's how I read him anyway. I was just like, he was a very cool, compelling character, but I was just like, back up off of her. She is twelve. Um, but they have. Um, it becomes this. He's never made sexy in that same... Like, he's almost like a vampire. Like, he's way more like a vampire than what I would think of as, like, a fey person in general. And so it ends up being one of those, like, the deal has to be fulfilled, but then the closure is different because the she's not... She has feelings for him, but it's not, like, romantic love feelings. So it's it's just, like, it's a different category, which I like. I like how it's, like, a complicated... She has, like, a very complicated little inner world. And she... You can tell she, like, talks... That's yes, she kind of. Um, well, and that was interesting that you said vampire because they say that like he does like a glamour almost, which I know in some vampire things is a thing. Again, I'm way out of my depth in the whole mythology of any of these people. I think I got that from True Blood, if that's any indication. So I'm gonna drink my wine and mute myself. Wait, um, Jen, when you were saying, like, back off of her, she's, like, 12, I found it, and maybe it was just me, like, I also found it really hard to gauge her age throughout the book, like, because there were points where I felt like time, again, suspending your disbelief, where time moved really quickly or slowed down, and I found it really hard to track where she was in terms of maturity, so I'm like, I don't know, should she, sh is this appropriate, what's happening here, <laughs> or is she like 12, I don't, I don't know, did anybody else find that, or am I just Billy? I definitely did, go ahead. It 
was that first section was like all one age, and then after that, it's like, and a year goes by, and a year goes by, and a year goes by, and that was very jarring. Um, I think it was it was a little bit confusing. You're right. For like a very for a long period of time, she was quite clearly a twelve year old. Like she was quite clearly a child. They had that festival, and then that's when the first huntress showed up. And then I was like, is that when I was reading it? I was like, is that the huntress she's gonna fall for? Whoa, she is way too old for this. Like I was like, slow your roll, let's see what happens here. But then she disappeared forever. But then when the we saw the second huntress, I thought it was the first huntress for a while, and I was like. What? So there, there were some, there were some time things, but like, I don't know. Like I said, I would totally get kidnapped by the Fae. I don't know because like, I was like, for some reason, I know it's, it's really awful. Like they could walk in here and I'd be like, sure. Um, but I, I don't know. For some reason, yeah, <laughs> take me to your leader. I, um, I, for some reason, I was like, he's not gonna. Like I knew he wouldn't do anything before she was ready. Like I don't know. I guess like. Her first interaction with him, he was like, it's not time, and, like, made her go away, like, the very first time. So I was like, oh, okay. I was like, he's not going to do anything or spend time with her until she's old enough. So then when they were, like, taking their wood walks and stuff, I was like, I don't know how old she is, but it must be fine because he thinks it's fine. But then I I'm like, that a completely different way where I was just like, he is, <laughs> he is like, grooming her back off. Like, I was like, really protective. I know. They're going to take me. They're going to take me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> she did. She did. <laughs> well, I think I she was coming back more for her mother. And she was bored, the poor thing. She was with these, this, like, awful stepmother, these awful stepsisters, and she just hated everything. And, like, the old lady, what was her name? I don't know, the, the witch or something that tried to help her mom. Like, she was gone. All she had was this, like, you know, guy sitting on a rock by her mom's grave. <laughs> I know. It's awful. But, like, that's all, that's all the poor thing had. So I was like, oh, you're so sad. I'm so, oh, I'm so easily manipulated by books. But I feel bad for her. Are you are you a big fan? I feel like you are. Are you a fairly big fan of that like vampire supernatural fella genre though? Like that you, you like know, that's what you For a while, for a while I was on a very serious kick. Well like not Twilight. You like, in fact I well you know, okay, yeah, and I'm not even mad about it, but like we were cleaning out the closet, getting rid of old read posters, and every time there was a Twilight poster my eye twitched. Like I was really upset about it. like literally twitch and like my boss loved it and I was like, ugh. Um but like I you, I did for a while. I really was on that kick, but I never really was on the Fay kick. Like those, what are those Anne Bishop books? Like she had like that three, that trilogy that I think you threw at me, as a matter of fact, I did. Jen. I did. Um, and there were the and like even in that, I was like, I know he's evil, but I kind of want her to go. But then she did it, and I was a little mad. But I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I wonder I'm, if it was different because we were reading it as adults that work with kids that we were just like that we had that protective instinct go off because we're used to being like hey you're telling me about this relationship you're in and stop and please stop yeah. <laughs> I have adults in your life telling you to stop and so like maybe yeah. now I'm thinking about it and I think maybe I was reading it like and wanting to like be like Ash please go to the library like <laughs> <laughs> let me help you I think Medieval when I library. read books when I read books I forget that I'm an adult. Like I, do, like, I definitely, I slip into, like, 15-year-old, like, sad, lonely Kim mode, and I'm like, someone loves you, and then I think it's great, but then I'm not reading it, and I'm a grown-up, like, we're talking, and I'm like, I'm definitely stupid, I shouldn't let them take me, but then if I slip into 16-year-old Kim mode, I'm just gonna, it's gonna happen. Um, I think that that all was why, um, the part where she, where they go to the other house, and she gets to stay with the other servants was, like, my favorite part, because it was like, just about making new friends and like not italicized gal pals, but like platonic gal pals. And I was like, I'm on board for this. This is what I. If that whole book was that, I would have been really. And like the whole like Christmas or not Christmas, like festival thing where they were all like dancing in the square, like the servants. I was like, this is what I'm here for. And then the rest of the book, not so much. 
Have you read the Tamara Pierce books? Have you read any of the, like, the Circle of Magic or the, the Lioness series? For, like, a fantasy series, like, if you're looking for, like, best friends forever, like, that's a really, the Circle of Magic is, like, it's all about, like, the power of friendship. Like, it's yes. pretty much amazing. It's basically that's... Captain Planet, Planet except, but like, fantasy. super medieval. Yeah, it's wonderful. So... Again, thinking like teacher mode too, I thought that, um, first of all, it's a really important book for young adults just to be able to read where, especially like you guys recommended uh, this book and I just trust you as people and professionals and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to read it and I didn't like do any research on it or even read the back cover like I just, Abby gave it to me and I opened it and started it. So I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and I think that their relationship was so genuine and cool, and I think that that character, I think Gwen is her name, the other servant, um, and even just the way that she talks where she's like, but when are you going to find a boy that you're going to love forever and all this stuff, and she was like, um, well, I don't know. I think that even just having those like little moments are so important to to young people who are struggling maybe with, their sexuality or struggling with these these issues to see these characters kind of grapple with the same things I thought was really cool. And it was cool that it wasn't, but it was cool that the that the same sex relationship wasn't the central conflict. I thought that that was really that would be a, that would have been a super easy way to do it. I think to like to not have done Cinderella. I don't know how you would have done it with Cinderella, but like to have like done like a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing where it's because like it's a forbidden relationship because it's queer, but it's not, like, that's not, like, the, it's, like, vaguely frowned upon because they don't want Ash to do anything fun or happy or good, not because they don't, not because she's not allowed to, like, be in love with a girl. Yeah, because so. societally it was like, oh, yeah, the Huntress, like, likes ladies, like, that's kind of a thing, kind of like a grand tradition, which, so it was kind of almost revered, which was nice that that it was only an obstacle for Ash, right? Because I didn't feel, maybe I was breezing through, it didn't feel like furtive at all. I didn't read that where it was like a tradition for the Huntress to like ladies. I, don't I just know. thought that it was maybe kind of like the last it. couple's. That's it. No, that's super interesting. See, now I just want to read Huntress. This, that's what I'm probably <laughs> going to do tonight. I have it, I have it here, that, and I have my part bookmarks. That could have been a me reading, reading things that weren't actually there well, I think in my head. I think maybe what you were reading was that it was common knowledge that this particular Huntress liked girls. So, like, at some point, like, I don't know, like, I think when she invited her, when the Huntress invited Ash, like, to the festival or something, and Ash started talking to some other girl, you know, she's Laura. like, oh, I thought that's Laura. what, yeah, 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 yeah. She was like, oh, I thought that's why you were here, you know, for the Huntress. And Ash was like, I don't know why, she just asked me to come. But, like, it was very common knowledge that this Huntress, you know, was mm -hmm. interested in women, and nobody, they couldn't have cared less, you know, like, it wasn't a for some reason, I felt like there was a story revolving the the first Huntress that they meet when she's younger, but I, again, it, I read no, it really I think, quickly, I but think I don't have my copy, so I can't. I can't remember if it's the, I can't remember if it's the Huntress before. No, but I think, I think you're right. I think it that's the other. other than just the current day, at least one time. <laughs> I think, well, and I think because she, like, the other one retires to, like, because her partner. Yeah, her partner is mentioned, <gasps> like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just thought it was kind of, like, because she's such a respected mm. position, then, and it wasn't, like, frowned upon or anything, where, like, like her apprentice or whatever is, like, making, like, oh, everybody's, like, into the huntress kind of thing. Like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. She's everyone's crush. It's just the Huntress is like pure 100% babe, which I totally get behind. She was such a cool... I wanted... So the the book was beautiful, the prose was amazing, but I just really wanted more fairies. Like 100% I wanted to know what happened in the realm of the fairies. Mylene, if this is going to affect you wanting to read this... They never go. Like they or she goes, but you don't get to know anything about what happens. It just like fades to black and then she comes... I was just mad. Like, and then she woke is, up and you're like, what?! I was, was deeply frustrated. It was so, like, anticlimactic. Like, that was the whole build-up was like, uh, 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 and then it's like, oh, and that happened. <laughs> oh, and that happened, yeah. That was a really, yep, that's, yep. 
So. Well, and you know what? After so after she like woke up and we had the oh that happened moment. I'm like in my head, I'm immediately thinking it's been sixty years. The huntress is now like dead. She's gonna stumble across her like grave or something. Like I was ready for it. I was like oh no. And then it's been one night, and I was like. Huh? I was like, wait a minute. I was a little, I was a little confused. A little, little miffed. A little, little miffed. So you but thought I, it was going to, like, suddenly Rip Van Winkle her? Like, where it's just like, everyone you know and love is dead. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy the rhythm well, of your fairy tale, Ash. Well, that's, no, that's how a lot of the other fairy stories went, though. It was like, and then everything was terrible. <laughs> so, like, you just kind of expect everything to then be terrible because the rest of the fairy stories kind of set it up that way. It's like, don't interact with them. It's all going to go to hell. Don't do it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was with you, Kim. No, no, they no, they set you up for like all this. St- like I was ready, I was ready for all of it. I was like, we're gonna know the secret of the fairies. Like I was ready for it, and like we were shafted. I was so upset. And then like, and I oh, so like I thought that it was gonna be you know like sixty years later because like when she's like oh well you you don't know but like at the end she he's he's she's like I'll give you one night and then and then something you know and then let me go if you love me and and he's like or he's like time passes differently here so I'm like. Like, oh snap, she's gonna come back, everyone's dead, it's gonna be 2014, like what? But it's not. But also not. there are more there are more books. So like are they setting us up for now there's going to be another book that is going to be devoted to this character in this fairy world. You know what I mean? There could be this could be just like setting us up so that we can read a whole book then about the fairies. Which I would to be fair, like I would totally, I would, I would totally read just like those fairy tales that she was telling. Who is it that said that that was their favorite part of the book, where it was like the little like fairy tales? That was really really... watched them. So, do you want me to read you the back? Go ahead, go. I um like skimmed a lot of those. I was like, and where's the moral? And okay, back to the story. So Abby wants to pick not a fantasy novel for our next book, and we will let her because. not a fantasy. Can that be how we can, can that be how we rotate and decide who does it? Is the person who likes the book the least gets to pick the next book? Yeah, there you go. Good point. I think that right, that's Abby, a great idea. Do you want me to read you the blurb from Huntress? I do. Read it. Okay. So, a different kind of hero's quest. Nature is out of balance in the human kingdom. The sun hasn't shown in years, crops are failing, and families are starving. So it's a chipper beginning. It's really, everything's great. Um, worse yet, strange and hostile creatures have begun to appear. The people's survival hangs in the balance. To solve the crisis, the oracle stones are cast, and the destinies of two 17-year-old girls become entwined when they are chosen to go on a dangerous and unheard-of journey. I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly. To the land of the fairies. Tana, Tanalini? Tanalini? Tanalini, Tanali, nope, it's wrong. Like Tortellini. The city, the city of the Fairy Queen. <laughs> the city of the Fairy Queen. There's actually a pronunciation guide in the beginning of this, so but I'm going to keep reading. Um, Tazen is a powerful sage in training, thrumming with magic, and Cade is of the earth without a speck of the otherworldly. As members of their party succumb to unearthly attacks and fairy tricks, the two come to rely on each other and even begin to fall in love. But the kingdom needs only one huntress to save it, and the sacrifice required could tear Cade and Tazen apart forever. So it's definitely, like, teen romance, fantasy romance. Um, and it's set up, like, even beyond the blurb within the first, like, chapter. She's like, I'm going to fall in love with this person. I had a mystical vision. Um, and she ends up going on this journey. And it's also, like, the 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 fairies in it are very more, much more specifically, they're not, like, Tolkien fairies. They're not, like, it's definitely, like, a foreign group. It's very cool. Like, I, I don't know. I'm definitely going to read it, so. Well, the fairies in this book reminded me of the fairies in the, like, what was that? Daughter of the Woods, Daughter of the, you know, Daughter Jenny the- also gave me, Forest, Forest, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They're very, like, like, uh, I don't know, like, Scottish fae, or like, you know, like, over, like, over yonder. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. they're not, like, Fairies, you know, like Tinkerbell, like the shirt I'm wearing right now. 
didn't even realize I was doing that. I am. Yes, I am, and I'm not mad about it. Um, but they're very like they seem like they're very regionalized fairies. You know, not Tolkien fairies. Not like they're very like specifically like regional. Like like these might be real fairies, like fae stories that someone like really truly heard like while they were on vacation somewhere. Is kind of how I felt about them, which is why I want to read them. I'm frustrated the, because I liked the writing so much, and I really liked the atmosphere of the story. I was like, I feel like I'm in the woods. Like, that part, I really felt, like, transported. So I'm, you're reading the blurb, and I'm like, I'm really compelled to read that book. I'm really compelled to read it, but I don't know. It was, I think, well, also, like, Ash was very much, like, her first, like, it was her first big work. This was her breakthrough from what I understand of the author. So Melinda, Melinda Lowe is, obvious, is actually a lovely human being. I've met her twice, and she's delightful. Um, but she, uh, I think it's very much like, it, it feels young. Like, the Huntress is definitely a more mature, fully realized author writing it. Like, and I don't know, like, I'm, Ash, is, Ash is absolutely beautiful. I think the prose is, like, really incredible. But um, even just the first couple of chapters of Huntress seemed more solid, and the action grabbed you more quickly. So, but I, eh, we'll see, we'll see. We can all revisit it and be like, nope, hated it, didn't like it, it was awful, <laughs> or, like, I'm obsessed. We can just... I'll read it. I had to hunt this up from the library. It took a million years to get this book, but... Do, um, do you not have it at your library? No, because our library is pretty small, so I have to kind of, like hunt for the less traditionally kind of things. Like, I kind of have to, like, fight for them a little bit. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we're, like, full of John Green. Like, which is fine, but we should not have, like, eight copies of Fault in Our Stars. Kim and I are in the same system, and it took a little while for me to get mine, too. And Crystal has the copy that I took out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was a little rough. But um, I would definitely just get the Hunter. I'll just buy it. I buy everything. I don't care. you think I'd stop doing that working in a library. But no, no. It's all about the ownership. Did, Mylene, are you, you're in a multi-branch system, too. Did they just have it at your library? or? Ours, um, we, I made them purchase an e-book for me to read, and then I owned, I realized after I did that to them that I owned it already. Um, but the... It's fine, though. Um, but, yeah, we actually, we didn't own it either, which I think is really interesting because it's, it's been on, like, a bunch of, like, honor. I'll put a link up to the, all the honors, the honors that it, it earned when it came out because it's, it's very interesting that people are still kind of leery of adding it to their collection development, maybe because it's YA. You know what? I don't think so. So when we were talking about, like, the different types of Cinderella stories, I immediately thought of Cinder, the Marissa Meyer book. And I actually did a Skype chat with her, and she's my hero because she started writing by writing Sailor Moon fan fiction. So she's basically my hero in life. <laughs> um, but everybody knows her books. And her and the first, you know, it's a series, kind of like how these books are turning into, but the first one is Cinder, and it's a Cinderella retelling, except she's like a cyborg in the dystopian future and, you know, in New Beijing, wherever the hell that is. Um, Probably so, in Beijing, but the future. <laughs> right, I know, like maybe, is it like, was it built over old Beijing, or is old Beijing still there? You know, I don't know. Like Mexico those, and New those Mexico. Those are important questions. Yeah, they are, they are. Um... But everybody, everybody knows that book. Like, though, those books are, are huge. I think if we hadn't Skype chatted with her before the second book came out and she got really big, it just never would have happened. Um, but, you know, everybody knows that Cinderella story, that Cinderella retelling. I don't know why Ash is less known. But I was, I was hoping that it'd be easy to get because of the Marissa Meyer books, but it was not. Do you think yeah. it's because the, char- the main character is gay? I think it might have more to do with the fey aspect of it. I think it, and the fact that it's historical fiction, e kind of. I don't know if it falls under that genre, but I know like the libraries that I've worked at have never really had a lot of young adult historical fiction, and there isn't. I don't really run across a lot of young adult historical fiction. I don't know if that's because I'm not looking for it per se. Um, but I think party. that. Yeah. Is I yeah I look historical fiction yay. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't classify this as historical fiction. This is straight up fantasy to me. It's like it, it's a completely yeah. different. Is there a map? That's when you can tell if it's <laughs> no because if it's like if it's like a different topography. 
Yeah. My going to be like, there's no map. I don't see a there's map. There's no map. And this one doesn't have a key either or like a glossary either. That's how I judge them. If there's a map and a glossary, actually, nine times out of ten, I won't read it because I'm like, this is already going to be too hard. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's too, too much of a trial. But, you know, I it is fantasy, but, you know, like it's like a period fantasy, you know, and like a past period. It's not like a treasure planet kind of future period or like a firefly future period. So I don't know. Um, I think, Jen, you asked if it was because the characters are gay that people aren't buying it for their collections. Is that Was that the question? Yeah, um, well, why it was so why it was not difficult for us to get a hold of, but why, like, it gets a I fairly... Think, Go ahead. I think that you hear a lot about... I know, well, me personally, I hear a lot about um, YA books with mm, gay male main characters, but I you don't hear as many um, with uh, with like gay females in the like it just I, I don't come across it as much. Whereas like there's some big titles I feel like you know what I mean? Just, like popular titles where you're like, oh yeah, that's about like some like gay guys in high school or whatever. And like, they're well, very Bill modern. Grayson, yeah, like Will Grayson or, yeah. and Grayson, and they're very contemporary, and they're very like, this is what you're dealing with exactly. And it could be maybe that it's, but I I don't know I don't know that that would necessarily deter people, especially since it's so deftly woven into this story. Like it wasn't like a I don't know. I'm also wondering, and I am not super familiar with the genre. Um, but how many like LGBT characters you find in fantasy novels like this? You know what I mean? Do you find a lot? Is that a zero? None. And that's you know. So I, I think that makes very, it very few. I think that makes it more important to have. But I don't know. Maybe it's just that. When did this book come out? Maybe it's just that it's relatively. Newish-ish? Oh, nine. Oh, what? Mine's oh, nine. Yeah, so. So it's been out for a bit, so that blows that theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know in libraries, like, a lot of the time, like, if there's a book that I've already read and I'm thinking about adding it to the collection, and one of the first things that I think about, not because I want to, but because I know I'm going to get this from the administration sometimes, is, like, how can you sell this to kids? So, like, a lot of time I'm thinking, like, how can I put this into book talk form? You know, it's this book about this girl, and it's a Cinderella retelling, and they're fae, and a hundred, you know, like, you kind of have to try to, like, figure, and some some books are easier to do that with than others, and, like, I don't care. I'm going to order it for the library, and we're going to have it, and I don't care if it doesn't work. Like, I think it's a great book and something that's really necessary, but I think that a lot of people might wander away from it because it's so untraditional. It's not like the, like a lot of fantasy books that we read. It's not like a lot of retellings that we read. So I think it, like, confuses people, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's just the population of kids I work with, but there are, like, at least a half a dozen kids uh, at the high school that I want to recommend this book to because... I, they'll burn like they'll burn through it. Like they will read it very quickly. I think that it's not necessarily going to be the most challenging book, but I think they're going to be really drawn to the story. Um, and I think there's just maybe it just happens to be the population of kids that I've encountered I, um, yeah. where I work. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that we had also had a lot of. Um, we had a really beautiful presentation last year at the high school that was brought to us. The GSA requested that the teachers go through a professional development um, about the issues that they face in our school. So the, it was student-led, um, and the GSA advisors presented it. But they there were letters that were written from students saying, you know, this is the like these are the voices of your students. Um, and I think that's one of the things that made me really love the book is because I was thinking about specific kids that would really benefit from a story like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. And again, that could just be from my personal experience and with these, like, well, I was really into it. 
I'm it glad that it was timely, at least for you. I'm glad that it was, like, a good fit for your population. That makes me happy. Go ahead. Go ahead, it, Kim. It sorry. Definitely, oh, yeah. Well, I, th- I think it, 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 it is population-based. Like, it is based off where you are because where I am now, it's, ba- it's like a farm town. There's 7,500 people there, and, you know, like, everybody has, like, six tractors in their backyard and, like, a cornfield or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very – so, like – Something like this is it's like a little like a little taboo there. Like there in, in our area there's one transgender kid from from what I can tell. And it's someone that people still like whisper about, you know, like they they're still like, I can't believe his slash her parents let them do that. You know, like it's still something that's kind of you know, like they were yeah, yeah. So that that's kinda of what I'm dealing with. However, where I was before, you know, somewhere more urban, this book would have flown off the shelves. Like I could I could have given this to thirteen kids. Like I might as well have ordered three copies of it and it would have flown. But it's definitely based off of where you are. Right now, where I am, this would be a hard push. Like a very I think someone would take it not knowing what they were reading, like not knowing what they were getting into. Um not to say they wouldn't enjoy it, because I've had some people read Aristotle and Dante, just, um, which is another LGBT book that I'm actually, yes, right, that I'm actually in love with. Um, but there there are people where I am who'd be like, uh, I don't know if I want to go down that road. And that's something that, unfortunately, we have to deal with. We have to pay attention to our, you guys know, pay attention to our demographic. And But I'm also um, a little rebellious, and I don't care. But also, your population, there are probably kids who need that type of story and also the there kids are. who don't relate to it need to read it too because it will make them more empathetic humans and yeah. that's kind of how I try and think about it it's like that's a good story for anybody because it's a good story period yeah so, yeah well, it's, it's I had to talk to a mom about that some mom was like why are books so violent why why is there so much this why is there so much that and I'm like because like when your kids leave this little town like they're gonna run into people who, who, this is them, this is their lives, this is what they've dealt with, and they're going to need to know how to respond appropriately and how to behave around these people that they've never known before, and these fictional novels can help them do that, expose them to different kinds of people they're not used to, and she eventually was like, oh yeah, I agree with you, but it was like a battle, like every single time, like it's a mini war, well I guess I'm going to get it anyway. It's, it's tough to also, like it's tough to invest that level of, um, that, do you know what I mean? Like to like gird your loins, be ready for the fight, and then not be sh- entirely sure if your administration is going to support you. Like that's a really tough place to be in emotionally, as far as defending. Sorry, my cat is like attacking me, so I'm now being Crystal and Valley, like not in a bad way, like just like like love attacks. So um, hi, yes, you. Um, but so yeah, it's just like a tough. It's a tough call to make. I think it's good. Yay, support for that though. Do you think that was the case oh, of the blurb? Oh, it says curse to love her? Oh, I didn't even... Oh, we'll see. That just gives... Uh, that's. I don't read well. Okay. Because that kind of tells you how the book... That kind of tells you, like, the end, sort of, you know? Like, too, little, much, little too much! Too <laughs> much!
And so it's like the blurb being written to like not offend too many people. Do you know what I mean? Like it was trying to, the blurb was trying to play it. The, it, it's, it's a really gradual build. Like, it's a really healthy, gradual, like, like blooming of their relationship. And I'm just going to make big monster hands. Um, like, a gradual, like, blooming of their relationship <laughs> and their, their feelings. That's one of the things that I did really like about it is that their relationship was very intense but very, like, chaste which I feel like is kind of hard to come by in YA a lot of times these days too, where it's like, or if they're like having, like it's very intense sexual feelings or whatever, but it was like classic crush is like, okay, yeah, I, that's like, yeah, I, I like dig, dug, digged, dug, no. <laughs> I really enjoyed that <laughs> relationship. Um, uh, I agree with you. Ooh, double talk. Oh, you're, are you yeah. are you show and tells? Crystal show and tells. I'm gonna see your show and tells. Oh well, no. I just brought up the the Goodreads review that made me so mad. Um, it was no, 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 with four exclamation points. Cinderella is not a lesbian. Ack! She's supposed to fall in love with Prince Charming and be doted on by silly little mice. This is a Ack. crock. Ack, like, like, Kathy Ack? Ack! <laughs> Ack. <laughs> or, like... Also... Continue. Prince, prince, sorry, the prince in this was, like, a total snooze. He is, like, a dud. Like, a total dud from the beginning. Okay. Too. With his, like, feet up on the... Like, his feet up on the... Uh, whatever, and, like, just kind of chilling. And, like, yeah, yeah, hunt things for me. Yeah, he was the... He was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was... He only showed up, like, twice. But, yeah, so in... I, into the conversation about whether or not it should be included in collections and whether or not it's important to be included in collections, I feel like for that reason alone, this, like, person that made me so angry, I, I agree with what Abby was saying and what Kim was saying about including it in collections because it's important for people to read whether it makes them... Maybe it makes them a little uncomfortable, and maybe it's not what they're expecting, but I think that's good and important. That's why we read books. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be exposed to new things, but, like, and on top, on top of that, like, people, like, I recently had this whole big thing. I, I made this really big blog, blog post because someone wrote some article saying that YA books were full of threesomes, and I, like, and it just, like, yes, yeah, yes, it was this huge big thing. No, 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 with, like, threesomes, like, three people having sex. Like, that's, someone wrote this entire article, I'll, like, I don't know, I'll send it to you guys all later, but, so, yeah, what bothered send me, me a link to that, and I will put it in the, I, I'll put it in the link to the YouTube was, video. Well. I was, I was, like, I was, re someone sent it to me on Twitter, and I was, like, what? And then I saw, I wrote this giant blog post on it, and it was, like, being retweeted all over the place, but, um, but the thing is, like, I think that people, people have issues with their, with their words, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if something is a retelling, it's not the same freaking story that someone else is writing. It's their partake, like, it's their version of, of like, of an overarching theme and, like, maybe an overarching story. Like, it's not going to be the same freaking thing over and over. So, you know, this is a Cinderella retelling, and, you know, it, it went this way. The, the basics were still the same. There was still an evil stepmother. There were still two stepsisters. The parents were still gone, you know, for whatever reason. And, you know, same with, like, the Ever After movie. And I'm sure that um, there's this other person who's, who's walking into the fairy tale retelling world. It's like Hudge, 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 I can't say her name. But she's she's been recently, <laughs> yeah, I can't say it. She wrote a book called Cruel Beauty, and that one was, maybe that was also Cinderella. I bought it. No, 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 no. That was Beauty and the Beast. It was Beauty and the Beast. And the second one is Little Red Riding Hood. But, like, you know, these retellings, that's someone's version of a story using similar like the basics of it are similar, but the overarching story might be different. And I think people need to people need to know that. Like, learn learn your words for for lack of like a better a better term. Like, it's not it's not all going to be the same, and that should be okay. It bothers me. It would be. No, go ahead. I'm gonna pop your volume. I'm concerned that your volume isn't 
I'm going to pop your volume up a little. I'm concerned you? that you've been muted. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no, um, I think teens these days are actually more familiar with the term, like, fan fiction. So when they don't understand necessarily t- retelling, I was like, it's like, okay, so you know what fan fiction is? And someone else is, like, writing kind of the same story, but not exactly the same story. And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, imagine yourself rewriting Cinderella, but X, Y, and Z are different. And they're like, oh. So that's, yeah. that's exactly right. Like, when you're saying, you know, using your words, or at least using the, the words that make sense to these kids. Because retelling... It's um, it's a it's a lesbian fairy AU. <laughs> Perfection, beautiful. That's class. Yes, that's amazing. That's that's probably my favorite quote of the night. That's amazing. <laughs> so we're actually um, I think that that does anybody have any closing thoughts for? For this, I think we're we're almost to the hour, so that went pretty fast. Um, I just like to apologize for saying male and female, like I'm a weird men's rights activist when I was talking about men and women earlier, um, because that just has a weird connotation to me. So anytime I said male or female, plug in a less creepy word for that. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just edit it on in there. Side note, my last thing is on the side in our little comments, I just posted the link. What is it? New York Daily News to like, I don't know you know, the, do you guys, well, no, but like you guys do. So like, I don't know, post it anywhere and everywhere. But the very first line to that article is, want to publish a young adult book right now? Make sure it has a threesome. The shelves of books aimed at 14 to 17 year olds are groaning. Make that moaning under the collective weight of explicit scenes involving multiple partners or love triangles, and already in that, it's all wrong. Like you, Twelve-year-old no. me would have eaten that up with a spoon, <laughs> BT Dabs, because I was already into the Harlequin book. See, if you think kids are not reading that stuff, they already are. Like, they're finding it underneath your beds, so calm they, down. Yes, they all, they, it's already there. They already know. It used to be magazines. But that is also like, wildly inaccurate. <laughs> it is. I, was saying, I, have, I have read a lot of teen books, and none of them have any threesome. Why are they? Yeah. yeah. They yeah. give you examples. <laughs> Where are these like, threesome in, books? Yeah. <laughs> They're also writing fan fiction that contains all of that. Yes. Yes, yes. So, like, move on. But, like, I, I so you guys can, like, read it and, you know, post it and, and yell at to yourself. I yelled to myself while I was reading this. I was furious, but it's there. That just goes so. to show the sensationalization of media. It, it does. Just throwing Snaps. that in there. Just, just <laughs> classing, classing up the conversation <laughs> with your with your buzzword. <laughs> I run Santa Monica to think. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah. Yay, our first book club. Woo, 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 woo. woo. Cheers, you guys. Yes. Cheers. I drank it all. It's empty. Oh, wait, no, there's a little left. I think that's how you ended. That's a good that episode. That was a good ending. <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop broadcast now. Thank you. We may do this again, so stay tuned.